Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Darren Jacobs, and we are here once again back on Friday Fight Night. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. This is the last fight night before the WIW presents the last stand pay-per-view. The Fight Night exclusive pay-per-view. And this is the go-home show for it. And kicking us off once again is Jake Griffiths. To Peter Bolton, who we now know to be the man who will be ish accepting Big Willie's open challenge at the pay-per-view. So the last stand pay-per-view, it will be Peter Bolton versus Big Willie for the television championship. And Jake Griffiths, as you can imagine, is not very happy about that. He, uh, for the last couple of weeks, has been uh, quite against the fans. He's been focusing on his own agenda, and rightfully so, because once again, he opens the show. He doesn't want to be a show starter. He wants to be a show stopper. And that is why he's working so hard to fight for it. But he has got one hell of an opponent tonight. Making his in-ring return, Sal Games. We have not seen Sal for quite some time. And of course in the trial era was one of the more dominant superstars of all time. Uh, was the former television champion himself. And uh, tell you what, love, I would love to see him stepping in the ring with Big Willie one more time. I believe he was a part of the Fatal 4-Way, which Big Willie actually won the television championship in. Um... But in, it was a big, big night, and we haven't seen him since then. He's taken some time off to recuperate and reheal. Of course, that was an intense match. If he picked up a knock or two, that would not have been a surprise. But for Sal Games tonight, he steps into the ring for the first 2018. So he's going to want to make a big, big impact. And that's for Jake Griffiths, of course. Understandably frustrated as the opening bell is rung, and these two are going to just look... Oh, hang on, look at this. Straight out of the gate with a neck breaker. We saw that a lot last week. And like I say, last week, Peter Bolton and, uh, and Jake Griffiths opened the show. And as you can imagine, Jake Griffiths was probably uh, a little bit frustrated about it, to be honest. Because now Peter Bolton, after picking up the victory, has gone on to uh, capture himself a television championship opportunity. Which the general manager was fully down to have. But maybe he felt, you know, maybe if he'd have got that victory there, Jake Griffiths, maybe there was a... A television championship opportunity for him. And look at that suplex. And splashing him down on the ropes as well. For some added impact indeed. And now Sal from the top just stomps on him there. I think he was going for something different. But Griffiths collapsed on the scenes. And now looking this. Looking for a snap suplex and connects. And now, yeah. So Peter Bolton, of course, would be understandably frustrated. He feels he deserves championship gold, of course. Only suffering his first defeat as a WIW superstar last week. And, uh... Jake Griffiths, of course, actually started on the Mayhem brand and switched to Fight Night not too long ago. And look at the clothesline. And it was, uh, it was obviously an unofficial trade because it was, uh, he made his debut on Mayhem, but then moved to Fight Night really quickly. The general manager just balancing out the roster slightly, making sure the numbers fit. And that was actually addressed to me before. So I just wanted to uh, get that out there and say that <laughs> we did notice uh, it was just a roster reshuffle that just was unmentioned. It's Sal in control here out the gate. Sal very much the veteran in this match. Sal Game has been here since nearly the beginning of WYW's formation. A fantastic in-ring competitor in the trial era. Was the longest reigning TV champion. But of course, in, this, in the sudden times, he hasn't been as successful. Missed out on several title opportunities. But he's been still part of some big matches, of course. Remember back to the first cage match of the series with Sal Games versus original Brad in the uh, semi-finals of the World Heavyweight Championship Tournament. He would go on to lose that match. And then uh, Brad would then go on to pick up the title. So again, Sal, this is another match for him, for him to bounce back from. This is something that he needs to get into the ring and get going again. This is what he needs to do. He needs to keep this kind of fire up. He needs to get in the ring and keep putting himself into potential title opportunities. And look at Griffiths here. Griffiths tossing him down the ramp and uh, maybe the plans for count out here from Jake Griffiths. Oh, but look at this. In a vulnerable position as he just stomps him right in the gut. And Jake Griffiths here. Clearly not playing any games here. Just looking to score the count out victory and land a few heavy shots to Sal Games as well if he can. And look at that. There's another running neck breaker. And I don't know what the referee's count is. We can't quite see it, but it must be rising up there right now. And Jake Griffith is going to run back into the ring. And he's just going to take the cheap count out victory. Oh, wait. No, he's not. Oh, he is. He did. He got it. I thought for a second he was going back out to face him. But he takes the count out win, Jake Griffiths. 
and gets to admire his work from the opposite side of the ropes. Well, Jake Griffiths, he wanted a win and he got it. And look at this, hang on, he's actually grabbing a mic now. Let's uh, hand the mic over to Jake Griffiths, see what he's having to say about all this. Enough! I am tired of being treated like this. Week after week, I come out here, beat someone down, and get nothing for it. I have one loss in WIW, and I'm still treated like a rookie. Well, not anymore. It's about time I start getting treated with the respect I deserve. So enjoy the last stand pay-per-view, because after that, the year of the borough begins. So be careful, because I'm about to become everyone's worst nightmare. Next up tonight, some tag team action in a warm-up match for the Chaos Twins, of course, who will be facing for the Fight Night Tag Team Championships at the Last Stand pay-per-view against the Wolfpack, which is scheduled to be one of the bigger matches of the night. That's going to be a fantastic tag team encounter for the tag team titles. Tonight, they've got themselves some preparation, and the first man down to the ring is K.O. Oxley, of course, to be teaming once again with Carter James, and they will be taking on the Chaos Twins. And K.O. Oxley and Carter James just trying to establish themselves now as a tag team. They definitely are teaming together for now, unless things change, because these two have worked really well together. Of course, the general manager putting them together, thinking that they were two very similar fighters and well-suited to compete in the ring with each other. And they've proven that on the quite a few occasions now, a couple of tag team victories together, and they've been really impressive as a tag team. And no wonder that they're going to keep things going, the tag team momentum. Of course, they've actually beaten the Chaos Twins already. So there's definitely a title opportunity in the, in the picture for the, for the team of Oxley and James. Of course, still working on some uh, tag team uh, issues and stuff. Of course, not natural tag team competitors. So they're still working out the kinks. Uh, so there is a, you know, there are still a few losses on the record. But some very impressive wins as well. They are a very strong team together. And that massive double backstabber that picked up their win last time proved to be very effective. So they're working on things. They're working on tag team moves. I'm still... Uh, they, I imagine they're still working maybe on uh, coming out together. Or maybe they just wanted to have that last bit of... Uh, of um, You know, their last bit of their singles career by having their entrances separately as Carter James makes his way down to the ring. And these two are very dominant coming into the tag team division course just came in at an awkward time where the uh, number one contenders had already been crowned but tonight they get another shot at them and I'm sure with a win here they'll be looking next up to face for the tag team championships and down to the ring a team who exploded onto the scene and have been so dominant ever since and now have themselves a tag team championship opportunity it is Jason and Tyler Chaos the Chaos Twins at last stand, we're going to see these two collide with the Wolf Pack, which is going to be one hell of a contest. It's going to be absolutely fantastic to see these two teams collide in that ring for the first time for the tag team titles as well. These two with the single goal of becoming the tag team champions, and they've uh, faced a lot of teams to get here, of course, having to deal with a lot of uh, adversity as well, having to deal with uh, the Vikings of Destiny previously to get this title opportunity. And of course the Vikings of Destiny, no easy feat themselves. Very dominant tag team, uh, for, uh, uh, were once of course number one contenders themselves for the tag team titles, but uh, slipped away in recent weeks. And the Chaos Twins have filled in the hole, and it's KO Oxy who's gonna start us off with Jason Chaos. And this match is underway, and here we go. Well, look at this, just a stare down to begin with here. And uh, I guess the Chaos Twins haven't quite got over their initial defeat to Oxley and James. And a Michinoku driver to start us off. Not starting off with the little moves, much respect for that. And like we say, Oxley and James de debuted together, but it wasn't in a tag team match. It was a singles match, which KO Oxley picked up the win. And following that match, they found a very mutual respect for one another. Oh, look at that, massive powerbomb there by KO Oxley. And together they found themselves to be quite a formidable tag team. Lost their initial tag team belt. But since then, haven't lost another. And they've picked up wins against teams such as the Chaos Twins. Such as the Vikings of Destiny. And they have been a dominant team here on the WIW Fight Night brand. And uh, on the Mayhem brand, of course, a lot of tag teams. A lot of uh, 
people ready to push their luck, uh, uh, test their might in the tag team division. But in the case of a uh, fight night, there haven't really been any new emerging teams that are quite ready to take the reins as uh, these two teams have here. The Chaos Twins, of course, exploded on the scene together, have been tag teaming ever since. They've been pretty dominant in their time as a tag team. Oxley and James, of course, debuted as singles, realizing that tag team potential was there. And a beautiful sunset flip by KO Oxley. Well, look at this. was calling to the tag, and he's going to get there. Oxley couldn't stop him. And in comes Tyler Chaos there with a massive drop kick. Oh, and a stare down between the two. Again, before another drop kick here by Tyler Chaos. And a third one as Oxley returns to his feet. Now going to try and crawl away for himself, trying to make the tag, but... Tyler's not going to let him have it. He has the momentum here, fresh off the tag. And now showing a little bit of strength here as he lands a massive deadlift suplex. And the Chaos Twins, like I mentioned before, earning this opportunity against the Wolfpack for the tag team titles after defeating the uh, team of uh, the Vikings of Destiny and into the cover off the leg drop and he's going to get a two count. Massive leg drop there by Tyler Chaos and gets himself a two for his troubles. And Carter James just watching on. Hasn't had an opportunity to be tagged in yet. Oxley was in control for the start, but uh, hadn't had a second chance to get himself uh, back in control enough to make the tag. But look at that, a massive brain buster. Might be able to go and make the tag now, but uh, picks it up back to his feet. Maybe sensing that control can turn back to the way it was. And now look at this. Has him up there for a massive backbreaker. And that is the typical KO Oxley style. And Carter James, of course, very similar to that as well. And now up on the shoulders. Gutbuster as well, front and back. Beautiful sequence there from KO Oxley. And Carter James is loving what he's seeing here. Might be an easy night for him yet. Oh, look at this. Toss to the corner. And now has him trapped in the corner. But now he's going to send him to the Chaos Twins corner. Not a good place to be. And here comes the tag. Back in comes Jason, who didn't really have control of the bout. But look at this. Beautiful teamwork there. And the double northern lights. And now look at this. Oxy crawling away. And he makes the tag. In comes Carter James. Fresh off the tag. And look at that. There's a big uh, drop kick takedown. And another one. And this is a really good showing here. Straight out the gate from Carter James. Taking out the legs. Smart strategy there. Taking him off his feet. And look at this. He is flying around like no one's business. To the top rope. Carter James. Begging Jason to get back to his feet. Carter James eager to get into some in-ring action here. Oh, what's he thinking? Oh, and a diving code breaker from Carter James. And now James is ready to finish this. Look at this. Carter James with his teammate down. A massive knee to the jaw. And straight into the cover. Have Oxley and James defeat the Chaos Twins again. No. And with KO Oxley down at ringside, Tyler Chaos was easy to manage to easily break up the cover. Oh, look at that beautiful springboard. And Oxley finally back to his feet. And what a showing it's been so far from Oxley and James. A, uh, a small spell of momentum for the Chaos Twins. But since then, it's been all Carter James and KO Oxley. But now maybe we can turn the tide there off that counter. And as you can imagine, the Wolfpack must be watching on fondly. No uh, in-ring action for them last week. Of course, Steven was in action in the main event last week as he took on Travis Cottrell. But we've got a massive main event tonight. And Travis will not be in action either, a part of it. It's got a big Champions versus Champions match. And you are not going to want to miss it. Back in comes Tyler, I believe, off the tag. And now has Oxley trapped in the corner. Not a good place to be, but he manages to escape. And Carter James has been looking great here, but the quick hot tags between the two has really slowed down the progress he's made there. But a massive flapjack to get back in control and into the cover off the flapjack. He's only going to get a one count there. On Tyler Chaos. And Tyler the fresher of the two. Jason uh, falling a little bit behind. Tyler's come out the gate really strong here. But it was Jason that really has uh, let the team down so far. But Oxley and James of course. Just been so dominant since, debu since debuting as a tag team. And they continue to show their true powerhouse style here. With a beautiful submission hole. Look at this. Straight jacket up on the shoulders. And he might have to tap here. In big trouble here is Tyler Chaos. Trying to elbow his way out. And he does. Manages to break the hold. And he might want to tag out here, Tyler. He's not in a great way, but a big shot there. Or oh, tried to get him into the corner. He couldn't quite do it. Look at this. Tried to take out Jason Chaos off the rope, but he couldn't do it. And Jason tags himself in. What beautiful work there from Jason to try and keep the control that they were re-establishing there. And there's a snap suplex from Jason Chaos. 
And K Jason Chaos leading the way for the team here as he runs to the top rope, full speed. And now looking to fly, Phoenix Splash. Beautiful move there by Jason Chaos. And straight back in comes Tyler. Just wanted to give them the control back before bringing Tyler back into the match. Of course, Tyler the fresher of the two. But he hasn't been able to keep the control as easily as Jason has so far. And now Oxley and, Oxley and James on the back ropes right now. And look at that massive spear into the corner. And going to follow it through with a belly-to-belly -belly suplex. And all of a sudden the Chaos Twins with the momentum. The hot tag's really been working for them here. And now they might be ready to finish this one off into the corner. Carter James is in trouble. Chaos Twins. Chaos to Chaos. Chaos to Chaos. And into the cover. And they pick, no, big kick out by Carter James. And I had a feeling that wouldn't be it, but, it, oh, look at this. He's gone for another cover. And this time, K.O. Oxley's going to break it up. And being dealt with there, the Chaos Twins, the very impressive move there. The Chaos to Chaos, look at that. Massive springboard landing on uh, Carter James. Uh, on K.O. Ox Oxley there. Well, Carter James found the energy to kick out, but how much more does he have left to give? It's been a dominant showing in the second half of this match and now look at this whisper in the wind whisper in the wind by Jason Chaos straight into the cover but Oxley breaks it up before he could and the referee sending him away out of the ring oh but look at this he's had enough of this he's gonna just try and send him out of the ring but Oxley dodged and the referee tells him to leave him alone and now picking him back up to his feet gonna send him to the corner again he's already been hit with one Chaos to Chaos and we might be looking for another one here Chaos Twins again Chaos to Chaos. And once again, into the cover. Oxley's being dealt with and the Chaos Twins pick up the win. They get one back on Oxley and James who beat them a few weeks ago. But the Chaos Twins get the much needed momentum coming into their big match at the pay-per-view. Oh, look at this. Sending the referee out of the ring. Oh, look at this. And now they're just going to beat down on Oxley and James. And this is just unnecessary. We're sending a message to the Wolfpack here tonight. They're ready for them at the last stand. And they're willing, they're willing to do whatever it takes to walk out with the tag titles. And the Chaos Twins sending a warning, sending a message to all of the tag team division. They're ready to take the titles and become the most dominant team in fight night. Can they do it? Can they conquer the longest reigning tag team champions and become the second ever tag team champions here on Fight Night. We'll have to find out. An impressive win for them tonight, but it's time to move on down the rest of the card. Well, before the next match, it looks like our number one contender for the World Heavyweight Championship is going to come out and say a few words. Of course, Travis, former TV champion, now number one contender, and will face King Sam at last stand. In a last man sta standing match, excuse me. And it's going to be one hell of a contest. But let's see what Travis has to say. Because he wasn't supposed to be out here tonight. So let's hear from him. All of you shut up and listen. Because I've got some stuff to say. In a few nights time, me and King Sam will face for the heavyweight championship. He thinks this is easy for him. That he beat me before and he'll do it again. But that simply is not the case. This time is different. Because last time, it was Cottrell's versus the Wolfpack, as it always was. This time, Sam, it's just going to be you and me, and no one else. And I know how vulnerable you are without them. And you won't get away with your stupid chicken wing either this time. Because this time, it's last man standing, where two men beat each other down until one is out cold. And trust me when I say... If it's a battle of thugs, then there is no one who can beat me. I know you like the back of the, my hand, Sam. Trust me when I say I know you don't have what it takes to beat me on your own. There is nothing you can do that I am not prepared for, and you will suffer because of that at last stand. So enjoy your last night as champion, Sam, because soon enough, I will be champion. The first man to win both singles titles. And when I do, I'm going to make sure that your legacy dies at my hand. By the time I'm done with you, Sam, no one will even recognize you. You may call yourself the king, but Sunday will finally be the day where I dethrone you. 
So you should all prepare yourself for the coronation of the new king of W.I.W. Travis Cottrell. Some big, big words from Travis Cottrell. But the question is, can he live up to them? Many have tried and many have failed. But can Travis finally be the man to dethrone the king in the last man standing match at the last stand pay-per-view? We will soon see, but it is time to move on down the rest of the card. Next up, some women's action, and there have been some slight developments on the build-up to this match. Of course, tonight was supposed to be a fatal four-way. I told you it was actually supposed to be a triple threat. I completely butchered that. I think I said triple threat the first time and messed it up. But, um, yep, that, there has been some slight changes. It's a triple threat now, as it was. But the winner of this was supposed to be facing Isabella Vega in the same night, and the general manager has decided that is not fair. And since he wants to give some women some chances to give themselves a, a women's championship shot, he's changed the way this is going to work. Next week, uh, wait, at the next pay-per-view, Isabella Vega will face off against Laura Stables, the Fight Night Women's Champion, but also will face the winner of this one as well in a triple threat match. It is now becoming a triple threat match for the Women's Championship. So these three women all get the opportunity to fight for it. And Vicky Valentine is the first woman down to the ring. Hasn't quite been impressive to start her career off. But a big chance for her tonight to become the Fight Night Women's Champion. If she can walk past this first challenge. But she's got a tough task. She's got two true veterans of the women's division. They weren't a part of the strongest era of the women's division. That is for sure. But they were definitely part of the success there. Shannon Austin. Trial era former champion. Of course, as I mention, as I say quite often, it doesn't quite go down on the record books. So she's looking for some new ex new success. The selfie queen, ready to make some impact, and she's going to be in the ring with Vicky Valentine, but also with Jade as well. And uh, that might put Vicky Valentine at advantage. We know, of course, Jade, of course, is a quite psychotic fighter and can lose control at any given moment. But we do know as well that Shannon and Jade are good friends. And maybe that partnership might come into a, a form of an alliance here in this matchup. But I'm sure they're both going to be very hungry to walk out the women's champion here tonight. Or not here tonight, but at the last stand pay-per-view. And one of these women getting that opportunity, not to. So they need to make the most of it if they can. And the final woman down to the ring. Here comes Jade Cottrell. Has come back very calm and composed, but um, as we know that she could switch at any given moment, she could lose control and slip back into that old cultural family rage that's kind of underlining in all of them, really. And uh, Jade was very much a personification of that, the first stint here in WIW, but looking a lot more composed as of late. First outing here on Fight Night, she lost in a tag team match with Shannon to Violet and Tashley, of course, not having to deal with either of those women here tonight. Or will be at last stand if she can capture the opportunity. But Jade is a big ask for her. Can she get it done? Shannon here as well. So let's get this one underway here. And look at this. Jade immediately just going to let Vicky Valentine and Shannon do the job. Maybe an unspoken alliance here. Look at this. This is what I was talking about with Jade. Straight away with the chair. She's not going to waste any time. Oh, wait a minute. She puts it down there. Right behind Shannon. Maybe she was... Planning to use it on Vicky Valentine, but saw that Shannon had established control. And Shannon with a snap suplex. She's off to a great start here. Now kick to the back. Doesn't want to waste any time here to take the control, take the momentum in this matchup if she can. And now look at this Irish whip by Jane. These two fighting it out here. And the two best friends. I'm sure they said before the match, no matter what happens, they'll be friends at the end of it. And of course... The Fight Night Women's Division enjoying its first month here. And at the last stand pay-per-view, it'll be a first, officially the first four weeks of the Women's Division's existence. And some women emerging as fan favourites. Others yet to establish themselves. And a big championship opportunity here for whoever can establish themselves here. Of course, Isabella Vega winning the Fatal 4-Way last week. This week, one of these women getting the opportunity to go and join them in a triple threat match. And Laura Stables, we haven't seen since her beatdown of Vicky Valentine. Who Vicky Valentine, I'm sure, will be very eager to get some revenge. But Laura Stables, as we saw, a very unstable competitor. And uh, turning a little bit darker in recent times. 
So it will be interesting to see what kind of attack she mounts at the pay-per-view. And Jade, still with that chair located near the ropes. Uh, I don't know whether she intends to use it or not. But look at this, Shannon straight away there, back in with a Russian leg sweep. And now going to go for Vicky Valentine. And we thought there might be some early alliances between Shannon and Jade. But straight out the gate, it's very obvious that these two are just going to go full out in an attempt to capture a title opportunity. And that's what you've got to do. You can't rely on tag team fighting in a women's division that isn't quite cut out for tag team division. I mean, you can use each other to help, but when there's only one opportunity available, you can't rely on a partner. And the first cover in the match that ends on a one count here with Jade covering Shannon. And now Jade going to send Shannon. Oh, wait, no. Fakes the Irish whip and lands a massive headbutt and scream into the crowd. She really is on one tonight. And this is the craziness that I was talking about. But look at this. <coughs> I choked there. Vicky Valentine just exploding back into the ring. But and look at this. Oh, and all three of these women just in a frenzy here right now. This is chaotic as hell. But Vicky Valentine managing to keep control as they take turns to stomp down on Jade. Look at this. It's a mugging right now as they beat down uh, Jade in the corner. And Jade defenseless to do anything about it. As they just continue to beat her down in the corner. But now Vicky Valentine going to turn on Shannon. But Shannon able to land the first blow. Look at this. The strength here from Shannon. And we knew she was a, a tough old powerhouse fighter. And she's showing it here tonight there. Massive stalling suplex. She held her in the air for a while there. And now Shannon ready to finish this. Look at this. Shannon ready to go for the win here. Oh, she couldn't quite grab her. But now he's going to go for her on his second attempt. Lifts her up. Look at that. Oh, and a massive pile driver. And into the cover. And Jade's right there to break it up. And I think that might have been it for Vicky Valentine. In a bit of trouble there, but Jade breaks it up. And I thought Shannon had it there. What a massive pile driver that was. And that's the raw strength that Shannon had. Oh, look at this. Now what's Shannon thinking? He's got Jade in a bad position here. Oh, and a beautiful move there. And now once again going to go for the cover on Valentine. But Jade got up much quicker than she anticipated. Jade tried to back off there. She saw Shannon to walk in towards her. But Shannon went straight at her. And Shannon is on fire here tonight. And look at this. A bit of posing for style here. The selfie queen enjoying herself. She's off to a good start. Oh, look at this. Valentine back to her feet. Now trying to take advantage there. Explore the suplex. And now into the cover with Jade. Groggy on the ropes. Is she going to get there? She doesn't need to. And she says that as well. And now look at this. Valentine with a bit of taunting. But she didn't see Jade finding her way back into the ring. Got her in a power slam position. And just bounces her off the ropes on the ricochet. And Jade now. Oh, look at that massive headbutt. Oh, and a big takedown as well. And now Shannon left alone in the ring with Vicky Valentine. Valentine's taking some big hits. It could be it for her. And it's a two count here from Shannon. And Shannon's been fighting hard here in this matchup. She knows what it takes to be Victoria. She was one of the very first women's champions. And now looking eager to capture him for the first time here on Fight Night. But look at Jade back in the ring. Oh, look at that. Leaps over Jade to land the blockbuster on Vicky Valentine. And she's been targeting Vicky Valentine here wisely so. Because she's taken a few more hits than the others here in this match. But now look at Jade. Middle rope DDT. And she crashes into the middle of the ring. And now Shannon's going to roll. And now with Vicky Valentine down, Jade's going to go for the cover. And she's only going to get a two for her troubles. And screaming because she knows that she's got a chance here to put Vicky Valentine away. She's in a vulnerable position. And look at that massive knee across the jaw. But look at Shannon. Very quick to get back to her feet. Because what's Jade doing here? Oh, look at this submission hold applied. The referee forcing her to... Release the hold and the rope break. I'm not quite sure why. Didn't think rope breaks would apply in a no DQ match. But now look at this. The twisting of the arm there. Oh, it just spins her whole arm the whole way round. And Shannon and Jay going to collide once again. Shannon going to get the upper hand. Iris whipped to the corner. Can she capitalize? She's got her trapped here in the corner. Can she do anything? Look at this. She's got a groggy on the ropes. And now look at this. A massive leg drop. She ricochets off the rope. Added impact. Been very impressive move there by Shannon. Once again, she's going to go for the cover on the weekend. Vicky Valentine, is it going to be enough to pick up the win? It's a two count. And these three really going at it right now. But Vicky Valentine has really been on the back end of the beatdown. She needs to start mounting some big offense. She might be looking to do that here. 
Oh, look at that. A massive inverted DDT. And out goes Shannon from the ring. And now Jade and Vicky Valentine left to fight. Oh, wait, no. Shannon recovers. She recovers and she stays in the ring. And now look at this. Watching the arm twist and snap there from Jade before landing a massive sidewalk slam. And Vicky Valentine rolls out of the ring. Shannon left with Jade. And she's not going to give Sh uh, Jade a second to turn around before landing the big suplex. And now straight into the cover. Is that going to be enough to put away Jade? I don't think so. And I was right to say that. Big kick out at two. And this has been a fantastic women's triple threat. Chair still hasn't come into play. Jade left it there but hasn't had a chance to go back to it. Look at this. Shannon taunting for a bit there before landing a massive elbow. And now maybe one for the other side as well. Oh, no. Nope. Oh, and it's the dirty little heel flick. Of course, no DQ. Referee ain't going to call anything on it. Went for the cover, but Vicky Valentine was there straight away. And now Valentine has got her in a big position here. Oh, beautiful. Snap suplex. And now Valentine to the corner. Valentine might be ready to put this one away. What's she looking for here? She's got her in a good place. Oh, look at that. A massive knee across the jaw. Has this it? Has Vicky Valentine picked up the cover? No, she flipped her over and she managed to get a hand out to the ropes. And Vicky Valentine nearly pulled off the win there. Beautiful cross body. And now going to go for the cover again. And that might have been the wise thing to do. Jade is still out and down here. But Shannon kicks out at two again. And the crowd are loving this. This has been brilliant. Women's triple threat action. And all of a sudden, Vicky Valentine finding some fight left in her in this match. And now look at that. Oh, a massive drop kick. And Valentine, the only woman standing. Jade's been down for some time, but she finally finds her way back to her feet. And now look at this. Oh, triangle hold. Triangle hold from Vicky Valentine. Shannon might tap here, but Jade's able to make her, force her to release the hold. And now just tossing her into the corner. Spins her around. And now Jade to the top rope. What's she thinking? She's got her in a vulnerable position here. Oh, and, oh, and a massive move there. Look at that. And now Jade straight into the cover off of that. Beautiful move from the top rope. And Jade picks up the victory. Jade is going to, net to the last stand pay-per-view to face Laura Stables, the women's champion, and Isabella Vega for her chance at becoming the women's champion. Well, he had a feeling Vicky Valentine might be on the receiving end of the pin after the big hits that she took. But what a fantastic way to end it there for Jade Cottrell. And the Cottrell family success continues as Jade picks up a massive win there. That's what she needed, giving herself some momentum now. And can she push on here and move forward in the women's division? Could we be looking potentially at Fight Night Women's Champion? She really un unleashed the rage here tonight. And can she take that momentum and put it to good use at the pay-per-view? Big win for Jade here tonight. And we now have our women's championship match all set and ready. So let's move on down the rest of the card so we get one step closer to the last step. Next up tonight, we got some more build-up for the last stand pay-per-view as Bruiser Brad makes his way down to the ring and the general manager has come out and said the situation between these guys have escalated quite a bit now and is ready to uh, announce this official match. Saul Manakira and Jake Griffiths, no, not Jake Griffiths, Saul Manakira and Daniel Robertson will be teaming together against Bruiser Brad and a partner of his choice. Well, his partner hasn't been announced yet and he hasn't uh, said anything about it, Bruiser Brad, but I'm sure he'll be very happy to oblige and be a part of the match. But tonight he comes out with Theodore Adam Wright, who I do hope isn't his partner at the next pay-per-view. He doesn't seem in great wrestling shape to me. But Bruiser Brad... Tonight we'll be stepping in the ring one-on-one -on -one with the man who saved Daniel Robertson last week and he attacked the week before. He goes one-on-one -on -one with Sol Manakira tonight and he's coming out first so the general manager knows for sure at least the match will make it to the ring. So Bruiser Brad, we don't know who his partner's going to be but at least we know at last stand that these two will, uh, he will get at least some payback on Daniel Robertson and on Sol Manakira. But... These two will be very eager to get some payback as well. Soul Man Akira finally can get some in-ring action for himself. Of course, the week before that was taken out by Bruiser Brad and now having to save 
Daniel Robertson from suffering the same fate that he did to the steel chair. And tonight he gets to step in the ring one-on-one -on -one before they face off in the tag team match at last stand. Of course, this all started back from Daniel Robertson beating Bruiser Brad at the previous pay-per-view. And now he wants some revenge, but so Akira wants some revenge of his own after being beat down with a chair and being unable to compete for the next couple of weeks. And now he actually gets to get himself some in-ring opportunity at Bruiser Brad. We'll see how this one goes down between the two. So Akira has had some big victories in his name, of course, including the former television champion in... Uh, in a uh, big willy so he's used to taking on the big men can he deal with bruiser brad here tonight daniel robertson is at ringside so we will see how this one goes and uh theodore adam wright as usual the manager of bruiser brad so these two left in a one-on-one -on -one opportunity and of course uh bruiser brad with a slight element of surprise we do not know who his tag team partner for the last stand pay-per-view will be but we do know that soul man akira will be teaming with Daniel Robertson. And that's quite an interesting team, quite a unique combination. But these two, of course, with a mutual uh, with a mutual enemy, which is why they're so eager to team together, and they were very happy to oblige for this tag team matchup. Straight out the gate, Solman Akira has been doing great here with the strikes, but once again, Bruiser Brad is using the strength. And this is what people need to realize. Bruiser Brad is a former boxer, a street-style fighter. He knows his way in the punching game. You, c you will not beat... Big Bruiser Brad on punches and kicks. And a lot of people do not realize that. And now look at this. Soman Akira just going to the outside. Needing a second to recuperate. And he was taunting there. Dan, uh, to Right in the face of Daniel Robertson there. If he saw that. Staring him down on the outside. Oh look at that massive big boot by Bruiser Brad. And Brad's brute strength really does keep him at the top of his game. As well as his natural boxing ability. He's a hard man to take down because of it. And a lot of people have struggled to do it. Daniel Robertson, the only man to actually pick up a win against him. And now Bruiser Brad, look at that, slamming him down. Oh, look at that. Tried to stomp him a bit more on him. But Solman Akira back to his feet. And might be able to get out of the hold here as well. Solman Akira quite fast, agile fire. And he's showing it there, there with a single leg takedown on the drop kick. And now look at this. Got him groggy on the ropes. He's trying to take advantage of the situation. And connects with a DDT. Soul Man Akira, one of the more unique fighters in WIW, which is why he became a fan favorite so quickly. Had a few battles with the television champion. Of course, was unable to capture the television championship, but did beat him in a non-title match, which earned him the right to face for the title. And of course, Big Willie made him pay the price for that. And since then, Big Willie has been making everybody pay the price for stepping in the ring with him in an open challenge. And at the last stand pay-per-view, Peter Bolton will be tasting, taking on Big Willie at the pay-per-view. So he's going to have that fun job of having to deal with that monster. And now look at this. Solman Akira has got him trapped in the corner here. And this is a good place to have him. If he can get him down on the ground, which he does. This is a vulnerable position here for... Oh, look at this. Theodore Adam Wright distracting Solman Akira. And Solman telling him just to, to piss off here. I'm a little busy destroying your client. And look at that. Bruiser Brad's back to his feet now. And he's going to be able to capitalize off the distraction here. Oh, but look at this. What's Theodore doing? Theodore looking under the ring for a steel chair. And he might just want to get this one done quickly. And that's not a bad strategy, to be fair. This win doesn't mean too much to him. But if he can land some big strikes, especially with the chair, that could be costly later down the line, especially when they face off at the pay-per-view. And now look at this. Gets him up on the shoulders and running. Crashed into the corner. And a power slam onto the chair. And the referee didn't see the chair being used as the distraction from Theodore Adam Wright. But a beautiful setup there, and it's almost as if Wright knew exactly where he was going to plant that power slam. And that's done the damage. And the referee's going to get rid of the chair before further use can be done. Oh, no, just puts it down again. Okay, decided against doing what he was doing. Maybe Theodore pushed it back in while the referee wasn't looking. I didn't quite see how that one went down. Daniel Robertson must not be liking what he's seeing here because Solman Akira's on the back pedal. And he can't afford to let that happen. And now into the cover goes Solman Akira. Uh, no, onto Soul Man Akira, excuse me. And he only gets a one count. So at last stand, these two, these three and one other man will take to the ring, of course. So it's going to be a great matchup. Is it going to be the last we see between these three? We don't quite know. But a big splash in the corner for Bruiser Brad. And now look at this. Snap over. 
and just tosses him over. And now we might be seeing the end very near. Look at this. Oh, drop on the back. I thought maybe he was going for a camel clutch. Decided against it. And now it's got him standing up. Oh, went for a big strike. Big counter by Sol Manakira. And now has an opportunity to strike back. And now look at this. Another big counter by Bruiser Brad this time. And now it's picking him up for a sidewalk slam. And Sol Manakira really receiving a big punishment here tonight. At the hands of Bruiser Brad. And now into the cover. Is that going to be enough to put away Sol Manakira? He gets a two count. He's getting closer and closer here. Bruiser Brad. And he's doing a great job. And look at this. The, f the smile on his face. And despite missing teeth, it's a very confident smile. Now spins him over because we know what's coming next. Bonsai drop. Crushing Soul Man Akira right on the chest. And that's going to do it. Bruiser Brad's going to pick up the... Wait, no. Oh, my God. Did you see how close that was to a three count? And I don't blame Bruiser Brad for thinking that it was. But somehow, Soul Man Akira's kicked out. And I don't think Bruiser Brad can quite believe it. But he's going to continue to mount the offense. Did you see the force behind that neck snap? Really trying to make him pay here for Soul Man Akira's interruption of the beatdown of Daniel Robertson last week. And Theodore Adam Wright just watching on very happily and proudly of what his client's been able to, treat, to achieve in this matchup. And look at this, just trying to choke out Sol Manakira here. He's been left in this lock for quite some time. But Sol Manakira now trying to fight back here against the big man. Not going to let him go down this easy. And Sol Manakira. Oh, and a massive drop kick. That's what he needed. Now he needs to catch the, the momentum. But once again, Adam Wright with the distraction. And he's just trying to get rid of him. Adam Wright has been his biggest problem so far behind Sol Manakira. Uh, behind Bruce Brad's beat down from the distraction. Oh, look at this. And he got caught there. And now look at this. The knees being lifted into the chest and head of Sol Manakira. But look at this. He shakes it off. He's going to charge right at him. But Bruiser Brad, too much of a, a massive body to just charge out like that. And he makes him pay for it. And now bouncing him off the ropes. And straight into the cover off the rope. Uh, toss. Is it going to be enough? He's taking quite a beating here. But it's still a two count. Sol Manakira finds the strength to power out and keep going. And oh, and a massive headbutt there by Bruiser Brad, who has dominated this match. He might be close to the end here. Oh, look at this. Oh, just pressing all his weight down on Sol Manakira. But look at this, Sol Manakira manages to escape. Oh, spins him around there with a punch, but couldn't capitalize on it. No, big escape there once again by Sol Manakira. Needs to capitalize, needs to land something big here. And a Russian leg sweep does the trick. And once again, Adam Wright, every time Sol Manakira gets one move on him, Adam Wright gets himself involved. The referee's got to be doing something about this, surely, because Adam Wright just constantly getting himself involved. But then again, not doing anything that would get him tossed out of the ring. Now look at this, a neck snap by Sol Manakira. And now can mount some offense of his own. He's doing well here. He's got him in a nice little hold here. Oh, look at this, just tightening away, wrenching away on the arm. Sol Manakira wisely targeting the limbs of, Sol of the big man. And that's what you've got to do against the big man. You've got to target the limbs, make it harder for them to hit you and, uh, and, and you know, and attack you like that. And that's what he's doing here. And look at this continuously wrenching away on the arms. But it was starting to lean towards the rope. And that's why Sol Manakira let the whole go. But now caught in the corner there with a massive chop. Oh, and look at this. Right from the top rope. Oh, and a massive choke slam down. And that could be enough. Soul Man Akira's in trouble. And it's a two count again. And Soul Man Akira with the heart of a warrior here tonight. And now look at this. He's in a vulnerable position. Oh, and a massive elbow right to the right to the leg there. Just chopping away on his limbs now. And now being brought back to his feet. Before once again with the neck snap over the shoulder. And now going to once again wrench away. And this has been a fantastic match right now because both of these two are trying to get the upper hand on the other. But so far, Naiva has actually managed to put them up, put them away or really stand out in this match. Bruiser Brad's been doing the majority, but then Sol Manakira's spells are uh, actually working here. His brief momentum spells are actually giving him control in the matchup for the time that he does it. And the two count following the head wrenching didn't quite work. And now, oh, look at that, a headbutt to the back. He does, this is a good thing about Bruiser Brad. He's relentless with his offense. Instantly just continues to attack and does not give up no matter what. Just continues to fight on the beatdown 
And Daniel Robertson must not be liking what he's seeing because Bruiser Brad is starting to really get ahead of steam once again. Oh, but look at this. So Akira. There's a counter and now needs to capitalize on it. Lufes press. And a beat down here by Soul Akira. Oh, and he's busted him. And the shots, he's actually busted him open. But the referee being distracted here. The referee is distracted. And Soul Akira is going to continue to beat down on Bruiser Brad. But Theodore Adam Wright sensing there is trouble here. Because all of a sudden, Soul Man Akira has busted open Brad. Brad is hurt. And very visibly so. And now being dragged to the middle of the ring. Might be able to flip him over for a cover here. He's going to go for it. Away from the ropes. This might be enough. Shoulders down. It's a two count. Soul Man Akira continues to fight back. What a fantastic battle this has been so far. And this is what this match is like. Imagine what it's going to be like when these two face off in the tag team match at the last stand. Pay-per-view. And a leg drag. Oh, and you see that? Soul Manikira holding his chest. He is hurt. He's taking some hits, but needs to keep fighting. There's a Russian leg sweep by Soul Manikira. And now picking him up. What can he do here? Oh, went for a spinning kick, but caught in midair and tossed back down. Bruiser Brad showing some strength there. And now has him in the corner. Not a good place to be. There's a big crash into that corner. From Bruiser Brad. And Zoltman Akira now. Can't afford to let the momentum that he just gained slip away. And Daniel Robertson on the outside. Just watching on here. As his rival Bruiser Brad. Continues to beat down on Zoltman Akira now. Look at this bear hug. Bear hug applied. Zoltman Akira is in trouble. He's tapping out. It's over. Brad chokes out Akira. And what a was a Brad that was. It had to do a lot just to pick up that win. But he manages to get the win. He gets one over on Akira and Robertson. And that gives him momentum coming in to the pay-per-view. Well, that's a much needed win. And I think Feud or Adam Wright played a pivotal role in that, to be fair. Every time Solman Akira got some control, he managed to do something that put Brad back in control, and this was the Lufus press that actually cut him open after the series of painful punches. But in the end, it was Bruiser Brad with that bear hug, managing to get the job done and picks up the win by submission. And Robertson just gonna care to Soul Man Akira on the outside. He must be in the sky. But look at this, the evil smile right at Daniel Robertson. And these two will collide. And uh, so will, uh, these three will collide, excuse me, with one mystery partner for Bruiser Brad at the tag team match at last stand. Who his partner is, we still don't know. We'll have to find out on the night. But it is time to move on. Now the rest of the card after a fantastic battle there between Bruiser Brad and Soul Manikira. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the main event. And what a huge main event we have in store for all of you for the first time ever. It's champion versus champion going head to head. The TV champion takes on the heavyweight champion. It's Big Willie versus King Sam. It's a non-title match at the request of the general manager. Although both Big Willie and King Sam did want it to be a TV title match. But the general manager had no interest in letting Sam have an opportunity at the television title. But we are here tonight to see these two collide in the ring one on one for the very first time. The last time these two faced off was a tag team match and Big Willie was teaming with original Brad and he came out the loser on that occasion by count out. But tonight Big Willie takes on the leader of the Wolfpack, King Sam, as they both prep for their matchups at the pay-per-view at last stand. Big Willie will be opening the open challenge. We already know that Peter Bolton will be accepting the challenge. So it will be Peter Bolton versus Big Willie for the television championship. One of a very few amount of people to actually beat Big Willie here in WIW gets a chance at the title. And as for King Sam, we know he'll be taking on, of course, his big rival in Travis in a last man standing match in the main event for the heavyweight championship. It's going to be one hell of a night of that pay-per-view. It's going to be one hell of a contest. But we've got one more match to go, and it is one big, big contest. So without further ado, let's bring out the champion and the rest of his team. It's a big, big fight feel. People have been waiting to see it. I, for one, am so excited to see these two collide. Two giants, two dominant champions head to head here tonight. And here they come, accompanied by the tag team champions, David and Steve. It is 
King Sam. The Wolfpack are here tonight for the final fight night before the last stand pay-per-view. Travis not in action tonight, but he's already come out and said a few words about his opponent. And I'm sure King Sam was very eager to hear it. King Sam has come out in the past and said all his rivalries have been repetitive. They all end the same way with him walking out the champion and that he wanted to skip everything in between. But Travis has come out and said this ain't going to be like before. There will be no Cottrells. There will be no Wolfpack because they're going to be busy with their own task of dealing with the Chaos Twins at the pay-per-view. So there will be none of that. It will be purely Travis versus Sam left alone in the ring. Of course, they have faced once this year already for the TV title. But of course, King Sam laid down for Travis, let him win so he could become the television champion. And then original Brad gave King Sam a title opportunity and since then he has been holding the title ever since. Well, Big Brad might live to regret the mistake and I think he has done to be fair. But King Sam won't care, not in the slightest bit because now he has himself the title and he's been holding it for quite some time. Those tag titles have been defended for over 100 days. And King Sam not far off that himself of holding that heavyweight title. But let's go. The two most dominant forces in WIW collide for the very first time. And here we go. Looking forward to this. And look at this. King Sam straight away with a headbutt and a punch and a headbutt. Just trying to take the big man off his feet. But with a single strike, Big Willie takes him down. A big, big strike there. And now into a single leg Boston Crab. Trying to take out uh, King Sam, who we know is quite a submissionist himself. And these two not wasting any time to try and bring the fight to one another. King Sam really bringing out the big punches. But bigger punches are being landed here by Big Willie with a clear power advantage. And Big Willie has been undefeated for quite some time. Last loss was to Peter Bolton. And since then he has been dominating. So that's about three or four weeks to be fair of being an undefeated fighter. Look at that big spinning back fist. But Sam stays on his feet and now going to unload the fists on to Big Willie. A massive headbutt and he sent him to the corner. He's got him in a good position here. A massive chop. Sends him down to the corner and King Sam really fighting back here with the fists. And that's what he's going to try and do. And look at that. Brushing his boot across the face before landing a massive running boot across the jaw of Big Willie. And King Sam coming out the gate flying here. Really wants to try and stay in control if he can. Can he do something here from the top rope? Look at this. 450 splash. Showing off his aerial prowess as well. And takes some time to taunt King Sam in the driver's seat. He's done what most people struggle to do. They've got it, he's got him off his feet. They've made big, he's made him struggle straight out the gate here. And there's, an, uh, there's a leg drag. A big Willie. Not used to being on the receiving end of this much offense up the gate. Oh, but look at this. Now he's got Sam in his grass. He might be able to mount some offense of his own. And he takes him down on a massive shoulder tackle. Big Willie relying on brute strength to deal with the world heavyweight champion. Oh, but look at that. Went for a double chop. Couldn't get it. And an arm drag. Sam being smart about how he's dealing with the champion right now. And now an Irish whip to the opposite side of the ropes. Oh, and went to take him out, but didn't work out. And Big Willie counters. And now needs to capitalize on that. If he can, Uranagi. Big takedown. Look at that. Steve thought about getting involved there. Decided against it. And wisely so. But of course... Neither man in this ring can afford to take too much damage because they've got big title defenses coming up in just a matter of days in the last stand pay-per-view. They can't afford to take the big strikes. Big counter there by King Sam, who's looking to fly! And a massive arm, a forearm, that is, flying across the face. And now, look at this, looking for some more offense, but a big counter by Big Willie. And this has been a fast-paced matchup, but now they stare each other down. They may be fighting tonight, but you can sense the respect for one another. Two dominant forces colliding in this ring and this is what everyone's been waiting to see a battle for the ages it truly is and it is living up to the expectations so far dragged to the middle of the ring here this king sam might be thinking about going for the cover he does first cover of the fight is he going to be able to knock down the champion of course not only a one count a one count there and he's mounting the offense right now king sam with the control and this is not what you're used to and maybe that's why we catch big willie off guard you notice the matches he loses, like Peter Bolton and Sol Manakira, they came out the game fast, they came out the gate strong, and they led the match from the get-go. And now look at King Sam, maybe ready to put this one away. Running knee! Running knee by King Sam! And the TV champion is busted open! And all of a sudden, King Sam might be ready to 
wrap this one up. We have not seen Big Willy ever in this much jeopardy of losing a match. And now King Sam wanting him to get back to his feet. Are we going to see it applied here? The most lethal submission in WIW. Cross face chicken wing applied to the TV champ. Is it going to be enough? It is. Big Willy taps and King Sam shows everyone why he holds the world title. He's just done what only I think two other people have done in all of WIW. And he has defeated the TV champion. What a massive victory that was there. He put on a fantastic fight. Both sides did. They really showed their different fighting styles in that one. But in the end, it's the world heavyweight champion, King Sam, who continues his momentum as he rockets towards the pay-per-view. Look at this massive running knee right across the jaw. A fantastic move there indeed. And King Sam continuing to show his momentum towards the pay-per-view. He's been so dominant as of late. And a massive victory here for him tonight. And his hand's about to be raised. Oh, look at this. Travis. Travis Cottrell's here and he takes out Big Willie. And, and uh, King Sam. Well, Willie rolls out of harm's way, but... Travis has got him trapped, but he forgot about Sam and Dave, who were already at ringside. And this was a poor choice by Travis. Tried to get a warning sent to him, but now might end up paying the ultimate price in a massive strike there by King Sam. Well, things are really heated. And at last man standing, the Cotchels or the Wolfpack will not be there. It's just a matter of who can walk out the winner between Sam and... Travis for the World Heavyweight Championship. That's going to conclude tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to leave a like if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Comment your thoughts and feelings on tonight's show. And I will catch you guys at the Last Stand pay-per-view. Peace.